Don't panic. That's right. My first thing I'm going to say just right off the bat is don't panic, guys. I know you've seen the reports about the heart inflammation or myocarditis that's been seen in young people after they've received the mRNA vaccines. And you've written me saying, Dr. Jen, what's going on? Um, so we're going to talk about that today. But once again, my word of advice, the biggest word of advice right now is to not panic. Uh, guys, I'm Dr. Jen. I'm a practicing family physician and on-air health expert and video creator. Let's just jump right in. First of all, let me tell you what myocarditis is. That is heart inflammation. Now, remember, the heart is a muscle. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big, strong muscle because it's got to pump that blood. Um, but it's a muscle and it can become inflamed just like other parts of our body, other muscles, etc. Generally, the heart inflammation, um, myocarditis, is seen um, in the setting of viral infections, bacterial infections. Sometimes medications can do it. Um, sometimes underlying conditions or diseases can do it. Um, but that has been seen in some patients who have uh, received the mRNA vaccines. So let me tell you what's been seen, okay? So now let me go to, um, and remember what I said, y'all. I said, don't panic. <laughs> I'm going to explain why I say that. Uh, so basically, you know that we are still tracking the COVID vaccines, right? Just because um, they are being given and have been given, by the way, to millions and millions of people, which is awesome, uh, doesn't mean that we've stopped tracking them and seeing, you know, what's going on with them. And that's a good thing. So basically, um, this is uh, one of the a ACIP, which is one of the CDC committees um, basically has a number of working groups. Uh, there's one work group called VAST, Vaccine Safety Technical Work Group. Um, anyway, um, these groups have been reviewing post-authorization COVID-19 vaccine data, safety data on a weekly basis, which again is good. And what they have found is that um, there have been several presentations of this heart inflammation or myocarditis that have happened in young adults after getting the mRNA vaccine. First thing I need to say, okay, first thing I need to say, and this is why I say don't panic, is because there is not a definite link. See, that's what is so scary is you guys are like, and anybody, right, is naturally like, oh my gosh, the vaccine's causing this heart inflammation. Well, no, we don't know that. What we know is that the heart inflammation has been seen several times in young adults who have gotten the mRNA vaccines. We have not definitively established a causal link, which means we cannot definitively say that the vaccine is causing the heart inflammation. We have simply seen it in several cases after the young adults have gotten the, the vaccine. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, anyway, several cases of this myocarditis or heart inflammation after young adults have gotten the mRNA vaccines. Um, again, relatively few reports of this. It's been mostly in, as I mentioned, adolescents and young adults. Um, males have gotten it more than females. Um, and it's more often occurred after the second dose of the vaccine as opposed to the first dose. Um, and typically, it's, you know, symptoms have occurred around four days after getting vaccinated. Once again, most of these cases have been mild. Um, and of course, the CDC and other work groups are following up um, these cases. Um, and, and that is certainly ongoing, okay? Now, um, once again, let me say the thing that you guys are most concerned about, rightfully so. You're asking, is the vaccine causing heart inflammation? Well, the answer is, we can't say that yet. At, at this time, um, the rates of heart inflammation in the people who have gotten the mRNA vaccines is not happening at a higher rate than what would happen in the general population, okay? So right now, uh, again, the rates are no different than, say, the baseline rates. And we can't say that the vaccine is causing the heart inflammation. We can just say that we've seen some cases after people have gotten the vaccine. Now, studies are ongoing, right? We have to learn more. That's why we're looking at this. And by the way, this is not the first time we've seen this. Remember Bell's palsy, remember? There have been other things that have popped up that we have said, wait a minute, what's going on? Is there a causal link? Meaning, is the vaccine uh, very likely causing the symptom? Well, once again, um, there is no definitive causal link established between the vaccine and the heart inflammation. It's something that we are still going to be looking at, um, studying, evaluating to see what 
uh, comes down the pike, if anything at all. What's really important about this, and probably one of the reasons, definitely one of the reasons why this is even being mentioned, is not to scare you, but it's to bring this up, especially to doctors saying, hey, docs, you know, look, if you have a kid, a young adult, and they are exhibiting symptoms that may seem like myocarditis symptoms, you need to be on the lookout because we've seen other cases of this after kids have gotten the vaccine. Um, so that's really important for doctors, okay? Um, do, 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 do. So yeah, doctors, we need to be aware. Now, so this is for all of us. Now you guys are saying, well, what are the symptoms? What, what should I be looking for on my kid? And for my nephew, my niece, my grandchild, who's getting the vaccine, who got the vaccine, okay? Uh, remember the characteristics that I just mentioned. If you need to rewind the video and take a look at that again, do so. But symptoms of myocarditis um, can be things like um, chest pain, cough, um, shortness of breath, fatigue, uh, swelling in the legs or other parts of the body, legs, ankles, feet, things like that, um, abnormal heart rate. Those can be some of the symptoms. You know, I always say, look, if you have any symptoms that are unusual, that are not like yourself, you need to get checked out by your doctor always, whether you've gotten a recent COVID vaccine or not. Um, so this is super important. Um, but remember, guys, uh, this is, it's important for us to know these things. As scary as it might seem, it's important to know these things because this is what we call transparency. You know, remember, one of the reasons why a lot of people are afraid to get the COVID vaccine um, is because of concerns about transparency, meaning is the government going to be honest with us? Are scientists going to be honest? Are people going to lie or withhold information or trick us, right? And for good reasons, many different people are concerned about transparency, honesty, um, you know, sort of this idea. So, so when the CDC and other work groups sort of bring up these symptoms or associations, right? Um, this is an example of transparency and I like it. Now I understand it takes a bit of us putting this in the proper context. And that's why I started out the video by saying, don't panic. Because right now, once again, there is no causal relationship. We just gotta wait and see. But the transparency allows us to trust um, the people who are giving us this vaccine, the people who made this vaccine, that, okay, look, you're telling us the good, bad, and the ugly, right? And that's what we want to know. So what do I say? Would I tell a child to not get the vaccine or a parent to not get their child vaccinated because of this? No. Uh, remember, the risk of COVID uh, is still a lot higher than the risk of complications from the vaccine, okay, um, at this point in time. So no, remember that COVID in and of itself can cause lots of problems. So I say, carry on, okay? Just be mindful, be vigilant, be um, diligent, okay? Be thoughtful. If you have any concerns, you bring them up with your doctor. But right now, do not panic. Um, and remember the other times we've gone through this, like with the Bell's palsy and, and scares like that and other things. Anyway, guys, I hope this is helpful. Um, we'll, I'll keep you updated as we get more information to see how this evolves, if it evolves at all, if this becomes something or if it remains sort of just a, oh, look, that happened, but there's no causal link or, oh, you know, whatever happens down the pike. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen Cottle, practicing family physician on air health expert. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do so. Please uh, subscribe and click the little bell for updates. Guys, I'll be back with more news very soon.